Hello, so today we'll be talking about how to translate um, from English to predicate logic and also how to translate from predicate logic to English. And so we'll be talking about uh, things like quantifiers and, and predicates and how to work with them. So we'll go ahead and get started with a few examples. Um, so suppose um, we are talking about kind of all, all possible sentences, all possible English text, and we have, we define these predicates. Um, so we're saying that C means that X of X means X is a clear explanation. Um, S of X is S satisfactory um, and E of X is X is an excuse. Um, so suppose we said something um, like C of X, um, I am clear. And, and maybe we say, okay, this, this statement um, for maybe this like, if X is I am clear, maybe we say, okay, this, this is a clear statement perhaps. Um, and so we could define certain things of predicates, but we suppose we want to say that um, every time and or for all clear explanations are satisfactory. So how can we do this? We can think uh, about our kind of two, two tools or we have the um, for all statements um, for everything and we have the exists. And so here we're saying that, okay, if any statement um, is clear, so if it's clear, um, then it should be satisfactory. So in other words, C of X should imply that S of X. So if say this, this statement is clear, then, then I'm satisfied by it. And so um, this is true for all possible statements. Whereas here we have, so this, this we said all, here we're saying some excuses are unsatisfactory. And so what this would mean that we have, um, we have something and, and we know that something, that something is an excuse. So um, be careful with the direction of the E's here, but so we have an excuse um, and so we might initially think, okay, we have E of X implies um, not S of X, that's not satisfactory, but actually we're just saying that they, they are unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory. So here there's kind of a like thing where if it's a clear explanation, then it must be unsatisfactory, then it must be satisfactory here. Whereas in this case, we're just saying that some excuses are, are unsatisfactory. So it's not like unsatisfactory because it's an excuse. We could have, I mean, it's an excuse and not satisfactory. Um, and so, yeah, we're not, we're not claiming that every excuse is unsatisfactory. So it's not, we don't have an implication here, we just have an and. So we'd say, okay, there exists an excuse um, that is also unsatisfactory. So we have exists X such that E of X and not S of X. For this one, for part C, we're saying that all excuses are either unclear or they're unsatisfactory. So we'll again be talking about all things. So we say, okay, for every excuse, um, Again, be careful about the way you write your E's. Um, so we might think, okay, so we have an excuse and this excuse is um, either not clear or it's not satisfactory. But we again have to have to ask the question, is implication warranted here? And so here we're not just saying that, okay, like there's some excuse and like maybe the excuse is unclear or satisfactory, unsatisfactory. We're saying that in every case, if we can say this thing is an excuse, if this statement is an excuse, then then it's uh, either it's unclear or it's unsatisfactory um, or maybe both. Um, and so say we have this, suppose we say this this thing like I am clear, maybe we say this this is both clear and satisfactory, um, but it's not an excuse. So I can't really claim anything about it. So it's fine for it to, um, us to have this there. Um, we have this implication. So, Let's now move to talking about, okay, what if we have some predicate logic, we want to translate that into English. So suppose we're saying that, okay, we're talking about students at U of M um, with X and Y, and we're saying that L of X, Y means that X is English with Y, C of X, Y means X is a class with Y, and R of X, Y means that X is roommates with Y. And suppose we get this um, statement that says, okay, for all X, for all Y, C of X, Y, and R of X, Y implies L of X, Y, one way to approach this is you kind of start from the outside in. So, okay, um, first we kind of think about, okay, kind of for every student, so for every student X, we have like, we have some, like, yeah, so then then all students Y, um, we kind of have for every student again. And we say that um, if, like, if C and Y have a class together and they're roommates, then they're gonna eat lunch. Um, so, so for every student X, Y, um, 
roommate, yeah, if they're roommates and their classmates and they're gonna get lunch. So we're kind of like, maybe think about these um, things and then we'll kind of actually phrase it in a more readable English. So we'll maybe say something like, um, all students um, who um, have class uh, together and are roommates, eat lunch together. So that would be what this um, what this logical statement is claiming in, in English. Um, and so, yeah, we can even phrase it in terms of like, maybe make it a little bit more clear that this is implied. So we say, okay, if um, students um, have class together and are roommates, then they will um, eat lunch together. Um, it, it's really like, you can kind of do it how you like to when you're moving to English. Um, but I would say actually this might be a, even a more, a more clear translation. Then the second one, we're saying that there, there exists some student. Uh, maybe we'll call, maybe we'll call her Alice. And we'll say that um, for all Y, um, so if, if there's other students that are not Alice um, and these students um, are in class with her, then she's not gonna eat lunch with them. And so uh, it's important to, yeah, to note that, okay, like um, Alice can eat lunch with herself. So we have to have this like X, uh, if we didn't have the X not equal to Y, then we'd say, okay, that um, suppose we just ignore this part. We say, um, so that there is some students um, and maybe, Maybe this is Alex, maybe Alice, maybe this is um, some other student. Um, that doesn't eat lunch with anyone. And like, she wouldn't even be eating lunch with herself in this case. So we want to make sure that she can eat lunch, you know, just on her own. Um, so we'll instead say that um, there are some students that uh, won't eat lunch with any students she has class with. Yeah, because there is this, um, yeah, this, and see, so basically we're saying that if um, like Alice has a class with somebody, then she's not gonna eat lunch with them, um, accepting herself. And so, yeah, so there's some student, which could, could, could be Alice or, um, or Brian or, or Bob or somebody else. Um, and then there's, there's some student that won't eat lunch with any um, students that um, she has class with. Cool. Um, then this last one is saying that for every X, there exists some Y such that X and equal to Y and C of X, Y or R of X, Y, and this is together. Um, and not L of X, Y. This one might appear intimidating, but um, you can work through it. It's, uh, it's, yeah, we can get to kind of do it one step at a time. So let's say, okay, so for every student, there's, there are some students. This one is saying like every um, student has someone for which this thing is true. And so this, this someone like, uh, it, like it's not necessarily like all the same person. It's not just like, okay, everybody, like Alice or something, it's we're saying that um, like there's kind of an individual person for everyone, such that um, if, the, if these persons, if this, if this, if this is not the same person, and we're saying that uh, this person is in class together, or they're a roommate, and they don't eat lunch together. So basically, this is this is saying that. Um, Every student um, doesn't eat lunch with um, a person in their life um, who is a roommate or a classmate. And this could if the inclusive or so that could be both the roommate and the classmate. So maybe this is being um, like I don't eat lunch with my uh, roommate Kevin, um, 
can be um, Alice doesn't eat lunch uh, with her classmate Bob. Uh, there can be a lot of different. Um, it's interesting for every person. This is this is true for all students. Um, and yeah, so um, that's just a little bit of translation um, from both uh, English to predicates as well as from predicates to English. And so hopefully that will help you on homework too. And just as you think about these concepts in general. Um, thanks for watching and take care.